All right, so let's talk about this. What's up, guys? Eric here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the end of the CW, the end of the Arrowverse, all of the shows we love, all the content we love is going away. It's going to be canceled immediately because the CW is for sale. And you might believe that if you're reading social media and all the hyperbole out there and all the people who are hating on the CW, but that's not actually what's happening. Well, yes, the CW is probably going to get sold, but... All of that other stuff is like narrative created from reading a headline and not actually reading the article or understanding what's happening. Now, I know a couple other content creators have already covered this in videos, but there's some stuff I want to talk about that they did not cover. And we're going to get into all that in this video. And we're going to read the article from the Wall Street Journal that sort of breaks down what is going on. And I want to like provide some context in terms of what I believe is happening um, what I expect is going to happen and try and predict the future a little bit and sort of add in the concept of what, well, let's talk about that now. What is the CW? What is the CW supposed to do? According to the CEO, according to everybody at the top, Mark Pedowitz and everybody involved with the CW, the CW is a distribution platform. It's intended for the two parent companies to be able to take content, put it on the CW, and then the CW either syndicates it or puts it out for streaming. This is what the CW was intended to do, according to the executives at the CW. So I'm seeing a lot of articles out there saying the CW is being sold because it has not been profitable since 2006, 2007, whatever. And the reality is, according to the CW, according to the people at the top, the CW itself was never intended to be a profitable venture. The CW as a, you know, a thing is intended to make money off of the actual shows. Each individual you know, property on the CW, all of the media on the CW, that's where the money is. Not in the CW itself, because the CW itself doesn't make any of those shows. They're a distribution platform for those shows. This is why a lot of the lucrative deals when it comes to CW shows and syndication comes from like partnering up with, you know, Netflix or putting it on their streaming service. This is why the CW hasn't been looking at live streaming numbers in ages. Now that may change with this acquisition. And we'll talk about that. But the CW itself as a network is a combination of WB and CBS, and they were supposedly putting things out on that network that they wanted to make money off of as separate entities, never as the CW. At least that's how it was explained to us. Now, either we have been mis, you know, the information has been mishandled and being relayed to us, or there's, you know, somebody lied. One or the other, if that's the case, if the CW really is being sold because it is not profitable for the parent companies, then either that means the content on the CW is not profitable or somebody at the top end has lied about what the actual purpose of the CW is. So let's look at this article. I'm going to put the link down below um, so you guys can go and read it if you want. Uh, and I do implore you to please read these articles. Like, don't look at these headlines and don't look at a lot of the clickbait stuff because you know, even though I'm going to read through it with you, I want you to go read it yourself as well. Get yourself educated on what's happening. So it says, Warner Media and Viacom, CBS are exploring possible sale of CW Network. Next Star Media Group is among the suitors for the CW Network. Now, I do want to point out, and I think Pagey talked about this in his video, uh, Next Star is a company that is familiar with working with the CW because they are also into franchising and dis distributing stuff in different markets. So this isn't some company that like has nothing to do with TV, that doesn't know anything about the properties on, on the network or anything like that. They're very familiar with the CW. Very familiar with it. Okay, let's go down here. It says, ATT, Warner Media, and Viacom CBS are exploring a possible sale, a significant stake, uh, or all of the CW network, which they jointly own, according to people familiar with the matter. Among the suitors is Nextstar Media Group, the nation's biggest broadcaster and large owner of affiliates of the network, of the CW. The people close to the talk said, the CW network caters primarily to teens and young adults. And yes, I mean, that's their target demographic, but I know a lot of people that watch the CW that aren't in that demographic. Uh, people close to the talk said they are far along in agreement it could be reached soon, though the talks could still fall apart, which if they could, and they could fall apart at the last minute. But I'm, I'm going to explain to you that I think if they're going to sell it, this company is best case scenario based on what we know so far. There are other interested parties as well, but the discussions with Nexstar are the most advanced, they said. The most prevalent scenario is Nexstar taking a controlling stake in the CW with CBS and Warner Media remaining as minority owners and re receiving commitments to be the primary program suppliers for the network, the people said. 
All right, let's stop there for a second. The reason why that is important is because that means that the, the actual value of the CW is not in the CW. It is in the content on the CW. Whatever the biggest shows are on the network is where the money is. And this company, Nexstar, doesn't want to, in the, it, you know, in the meantime, they don't want to deal with trying to come up with people, you know, making content or whatever. They want to continue to allow uh, CBS and Warner Media to, you know, be the ones out there suiting for content, the ones that are bringing things to the platform. This is why I highly doubt that they're going to come in, buy the CW, and cancel all the shows. Because that makes no financial sense for them. It doesn't make any sense financially. All right, it goes on to say, CBS and Warner Media have been exploring strategic options for the CW network for several months. Some of the people involved in the talk said the network isn't profitable as a standalone broadcast entity, but the content produced for it is a valuable asset for other platforms at the parent company, what I just said. Warner Brothers, which produces some of the CW's biggest shows, including Riverdale, has generated significant revenue selling the shows to Netflix over the years, other popular shows on the CW include All American and The Flash. Popular CBS produced shows for the CW include Walker, based on the intellectual property from the TV show Walker, Texas Ranger. IP is king when it comes to this kind of stuff. This intellectual property is something that Nexstar would not want to give up because they're, it's going to be really hard to find that anywhere else. And just a reminder that the CW is not a company. It doesn't make shows. It is a platform for shows. With the launch of HBO Max, the Warner Media owned direct to consumer streaming service, the CW made from Warner Brothers in the future will be funneled there. So there you go. Um, all of the CW shows made from Warner Brothers, regardless of what happens with the CW, will be put to HBO Max. So that means no more Netflix deals with like any of the other shows after the sale happens. It'll directly go to HBO Max, which is great for Warner Media. AT&T is in the process of merging its Warner Media Entertainment assets, which may also, include the, may also include the cable networks TNT, TBS, and CNN, with programming behemoth Discovery Inc. to create a separate company. The deal is expected to close in the spring. So this is all this, like, there's been a lot of talk about this, this merger with Discovery and Warner Media and what it means for everything. I'm just going to throw my two cents in here and say from a standpoint of, like, making content, it makes a lot more sense for this merger to allow Warner media to make the stuff that Warner makes and for discovery to continue making the stuff they make all the reality shows, all the nature shows, all the documentaries, all of those things for those to stay separate in the, in the beginning. Now, four or five years from now, could they start merging and bringing stuff together for IP purposes? Yes. But at the beginning, I don't see much change in that except for how it's just, you know, the distribution platform. For Nextstar, controlling stake in the CW would represent a significant step in its content aspirations. It already has been invested heavily in a nation national cable service called News Nation. I don't really care too much about that. Viacom, CBS, and Warner Media have been longtime partners in the CW since the merger of UPN and the WB Networks in 2006. That's the, that is the next thing that I want to talk about here. This is not the first time that these companies have dealt with getting rid of something and merging into something new, all right? This happened with UPN and the WB, which were both separate networks with separate programming on it. At a certain point, they came together, the CW happened, and they kept profitable things. They kept profitable shows. And some of those shows went on for several years after the merger. And so that's why I truly believe that this sale, without a merger at this point, this is just a sale of the network. It's like they're breaking down two or three separate companies to make them into one. This is simply selling the CW. I believe that the, the most likely scenario is anything that is still profitable as an IP, as intellectual property, as a series, will continue on and they will continue to want those shows because there is no money in the name of the CW without the property to go on it. It's, there's just no money in it. And that's pretty much the end of the story there. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about my uh, my thoughts on this. All right, so what does this mean? Does this mean we're going to lose The Flash? Does this mean we're going to lose Naomi? Does this mean we're going to lose, you know, Superman and Lois and stuff like that? In the short term, I would say no. I don't think so. And the reason why is if you look at like the top five, the top 10 shows on the CW right now, 
a lot of those shows, the ones that we love are in that list. The only shows that I would be worried about, and we're going to reverse course back to like seven years ago, are shows that are not performing in live ratings. That's the unfortunate reality of this. If a show is not doing well in live ratings, that means it is in trouble if a new company comes in and acquires the CW because they're not going to be making money off of that syndication um, you know, or anything like that. It's strictly going to be the CW website where stuff streams at and live ratings. So I have a feeling we may see a push back to that antiquated system of live, uh, you know, same day viewership, which I'm not happy about. I think that that's a very bad metric for stuff being popular. I think you have to look at fan reception, brand loyalty, things like that. And they may very well look at that, but I don't think that is going to be the biggest thing for them. I think they're going to want those live same day ratings. Now, this could be a good thing. Let me explain why before we flip out. Right now, a lot of the shows have been given so much creative freedom, like, say, Legends of Tomorrow, The Flash in some ways. They've been given so much creative freedom that the fans of the actual like characters and stuff like that have been yelling and screaming and saying, the, the storylines suck, the characters suck, something needs to change, and nothing has been done about it for years because the CW never cared too much about those live same-day viewership ratings. They didn't care about those big numbers. With this purchase, with this you know majority stake coming from Nexstar, they may want to put the pressure on the showrunners to actually put out TV, you know, storylines on TV that get people to want to tune in every single week. So something like The Flash may change back into what it was back in like season two and season three, where they were trying to get us to come back and watch every single week by having a huge mystery or a huge story. Now, from the creative side, if you're someone like Eric Wallace or one of the people working on The Flash that are doing something where you don't have to worry about that every single week, this is not great for you. This is not great because you're going to be like, I have to make something that's going to keep people coming back every week. I can't focus on pocket stories anymore. I have to go back to that idea of a, you know, a season long story where there's a big mystery that keeps people coming back every single week. That may not be what someone wants to do creatively. They may go, you know, this is not for me. I want somebody else to do this. But as a viewer, if you love those earlier seasons and the way things were done back in the day, we may see a return to that once the live ratings come back into play. We don't know for sure if that's going to be the metric they go for, but I have to assume if you are a majority owner and you do not have your own streaming platform or you don't have a way to sell the rights of the actual shows and you have these other production companies, you know, with HBO or with Warner Media and stuff in HBO, and then you have the stuff with CBS and their own little platforms, that you're going to want to make money somewhere else. And that's going to be in the ad revenue from the live viewership. So there we have it. I don't know what the shakeups are going to be at the top, but I feel like it's probably going to be pretty significant. I have a big feeling that we're going to see some shifting of um, people that we see at the forefront of the CW who have been making statements, CEOs, CFOs, things like that. I, I'm, I'm not totally sure long term. Um, short term, I don't think much will happen. I think short term, at least for the next year, maybe year and a half, we will see very little changes in the larger content, the stuff that people just watch all the time on the CW. I would be worried for contract negotiations, for actors that are like not on, if you're already in a contract for like two more seasons, I don't think anything's going to change there. Renegotiation of contracts might be a problem. That may be an issue. So I want to say, don't get afraid. Don't be scared. Don't be worried, but keep your mind on the fact that these contract negotiations may be a big deal. Plus, this may ch change the way the CW airs content. Like, we may see changes of nights on shows. We may see changes of time slots on shows. We may see some really interesting pairings of shows. I, I don't know what that's going to mean after this season, if this sale happens. Because I'm assuming whatever's going to happen will happen once the shows are done with their seasons. I don't think Next Star is going to come in and shift everything in the middle of a season for shows. I think they might wait until the fall. So like the fall of 2022, uh, maybe even the beginning of 2023. But uh, yeah, don't believe any of these channels saying the sky is falling and this is the end of everything. If you look back historically, this has happened before with UPN and WB. 
A lot of those profitable shows continued. There are, are other examples of this happening with other networks. And this is an interesting change because we've seen so much investment in streaming over the last, you know, six to eight years that it's going to be interesting to see what this means for the CW in terms of like their longevity as a distribution platform. Because now that they have an owner that doesn't have their own sort of streaming service like Netflix or you know Paramount Plus or HBO Max or whatever, they don't have those kinds of things. It's going to be interesting to see where their loyalties are. Are they loyal to the numbers on live day streaming? Are they loyal to streaming on the CW app? Are they going to push hard with the CW app? Are we going to see more original content on the CW app now? I don't know where that's going to go. That is the one thing that I'm the most interested in is to see what's going to happen with that. Because I truly believe that will be something that could change the way all of these shows are structured and how they allow the creative process to happen. But I'm not totally sure. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I don't really have much else to add. I will say again, sort of reserve your your fear and your anger and your and your confusion about this until we see exactly what's going to happen. If if they decide that Next Star is not the company that the CW is going to sell to, then we need to have to worry. I think there's a there's a reason like if another company like a larger company gobbles up the CW, I think it'll gobble up the content and the CW itself may just go away because there's not a lot of money in the CW if you're not invested in a distribution platform. There we go. That's pretty much it. I'm out of here. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you then.